Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another autopsy. Yes, so far this series has been called Teardown and Analysis, however that name is just way too long, so although I'm sure there are just about a million other people who are already using this name, I decided to still rename the series to just simply be an autopsy. So here we go. Today, a privilege calculator classic kind of uh, table calculator and essentially you may be able to see that it is exactly the same as those old printing calculators that had a little printer on the back that had the, the paper strip coming out of it as you were going along. As you can clearly see the interesting part of this is it doesn't have that printer so Maybe we can actually find some uh, traces on the circuit boards where one of those printers may would have been plugged into. Who knows? This is a privilege. I do wanna, I do wanna capture this uh, logo that they had, if uh, if we can. That is, there it is. This is for all their uh, scientific products. They had this little. Uh, thing right there. I kind of like the way that looks, I really have to say. Uh, they had different logos and as I said uh, this was the logo for their uh, scientific products uh, because <laughs> from uh, Privilege you could also get washing machines and uh, some such. This was sold by a company called Quelle and it was one of these uh, home shopping companies. You had a catalog and you could just order in stuff via the telephone and postcards and whatever. So that's where this came from. And uh, so this does not have a model number or anything. Uh, it does have a serial number. And other than that, it only has the ordering number, which was 03987. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. As you can see, it does take a while for the display to come on. Now, as we turn this back off and on again, as you can see, it comes on much quicker. So, there must be some sort of a filament set up in this. So, I'm quite excited to see if we have any tubes or, or something along those lines in there. So, we uh, go ahead and uh, type in some of our numbers until we get an error. You can see, there we have the display. We look straight into it. It's a nice orange display. That's another unusual thing, because fluorescent displays usually have this uh, kind of uh, greenish-blue color, unless you have a color filter in front of there, but this really doesn't look like there was a color filter. Uh, in fact, it kind of looks... I'm not sure if I can make that visible on camera, it kind of looks like the numbers, the uh, segments that are lighting up, are actually popping out of the material that they are mounted on a little bit. So, let's go ahead and uh, take the cover off and see if we can find out why it all looks the way it looks. I got this thing in a thrift store and uh, I paid like two euro for it or something. It came with this uh, not so very safe power cord. Uh, it's, a, it's an ungrounded power cord, however, as you can see, it does have a plug on there with the hole for the safety ground. So you can plug the grounded uh, device into there. It's not exactly safe. Two screws on the back are removed. Does, uh, oh, we do have some more screws on the bottom. Screws have been removed. Let's see what's going on inside. Okay, as you can see, that's quite interesting. I really have to say. There's really not a whole lot going on in here. I mean, uh, as you can see, they do have a, a card edge connector connecting the two halves of the housing. <laughs> Maybe we can actually do this uh, autopsy in a way that I can put this back together afterwards again. But here you can see, here we have these extremely weird displays. So I guess we're just going to concentrate on that, because other than that, other than this all, we have on here, we have some uh, capacitors, 
probably for uh, noise suppression. Uh, have a bunch of transistors. Those are most most likely for uh, just uh, controlling or uh, switching the individual segments of the display. So that's what this is all about. And other than that, we only have this one chip right there. This is a TMS 0105 BNC made by Texas Instruments, so clearly that suggests that it is a calculator chip. Let's see if we can get a close up of that. There it is. Behind it here we have a power supply which once again seems to be just a rather basic kind of thing. And uh, yes, we do in fact have the safety ground connected to something, so that power cord that came with the device was definitely not supposed to be used with this. Uh, under the display there is really just a, uh, a filter capacitor hiding in there. Let's see if I can get this uh, circuit board out of here, just so that we can make sure that it's not any kind of a double layer set up. Oh yes, wow, this thing... <laughs> I am amazed. This thing is very, very service friendly. So there we have the whole calculator unit. Metal back, which is grounded, with the uh, plug-in on the back of it. And here we have the underside of the circuit board. Lots and lots and lots of traces on this, I really have to say. However, this also tells us something about who really made this thing. Obviously it was not made by Privileg, they just uh, bought this in Japan. It does in fact say Japan on here, and it really was made by NCM, and it is uh, what looks to be the model MJ2. Down there we have a uh, little logo on the circuit board. NCM, it says. I'd say that's who made this thing. And let's go ahead and see if we can uh, take a bit of a closer look at this display. Well, unfortunately, it seems like the display is not going to come apart all that easily. You can kind of bend it away. I do have this uh, cap on the back. I guess this is uh, where they uh, pulled the vacuum into this, and this is just kind of a protection for the glass that's behind it there. Uh, this was made by uh, Ashio, I guess, U-S-H-I-O, Electric Incorporated, Tokyo, Japan. A little label right there. It looks like we can bend some tabs away, and then we should be able to uh, get this metal frame off of there. Okay, we got a little metal frame right there, a piece of cardboard down in the bottom for insulation purposes, and okay. As you can see, this must be a very, very early version of a vacuum fluorescent display right there. It's quite interesting. Here it is, and as you can see, they uh, blanked out one of the numbers. That's also kind of interesting. Oh yes, can actually take the little uh, cardboard thing off of there, and as you can see, there is just another digit hiding behind of that. So that's how they did that. All quite simple. You can also see how they connected the uh, vacuum tube to the uh, connections on the outside using these uh, metal strips coming out of the uh, out of the glass. Here we have an extreme close-up of the display. You can see we have this kind of a wire mesh over it. And then we have for each individual number something that uh, is capable of lighting up. I plucked it all back in. There it is. Really quite weird. These wire pieces in there light up. I guess the wire mesh is just, uh, you know, basically uh, you put a voltage into those pieces of wire and then the uh, mesh over it is uh, the other, you know, the, the cathode basically. Something along those lines. 
quite interesting to see this. Does this thing do anything? <laughs> oh, look at that. They had a reason to uh, stick this piece of cardboard over that, because as you can see, that does something, uh, something undefined. Just kind of lights up a little bit. But I could imagine what they, um, what they may have done is uh, for this uh, kind of display they chose uh, displays they made that had this certain uh, this certain character um, with with a production defect. So this thing doesn't work properly. So just covered it up and sold it as uh, this type of a thing. Now, on the other half of the housing, as you can see, once again, we have a, uh, a card edge connector connecting the two boards together. This is a really nice design. This side up even has a little sticker on there. You take that off, and here we have what uh, seems to be just a, uh, a regular kind of uh, keyboard that uh, you could get as, uh, as a component back then. We do have a, uh, a wheel on there that selects the amount of uh, spaces after the, uh, after the point, the decimal point. You can select that, and as you can see, the other half of that wheel sticks out on the inside. So, you can also set it from the inside. Uh, and then we have, as a bit of an extra, but it is also... Oh, is it? No, this actually seems to be an, uh, an extra right here. This does not belong to this uh, circuit board. That is this uh, K and N selector. I don't know what that does. Wasn't able to figure that out. Just a standard uh, keyboard. Basically, this whole thing was uh, really only built from some, uh, some cheap mass production components. I mean, it is a cheap device sold by... Uh, a home shopping company, so you kind of expect that, but uh, still quite interesting. So, I don't know, is there anything else to show? Well, I could uh, tear the keypad apart, but I guess that wouldn't be too terribly interesting. Other than that, these transistors are, are Japanese types, obviously, made by Mitsubishi 2SC869. And 2SC945. So that's what those are. Really nothing special except for what I guess was an American made Texas Instruments calculator chip as the heart of the whole unit. Well, there we have it an autopsy that uh, actually did not require me to uh, break the item in question. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back together, and there it is, all back together, and as I plug this back in, it's all still functional. So, no harm has been done. Thank you for watching, and see you again soon.